Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to week three of the Gear Direct TV Club. This week we're going to be having OC Esports Broncos face against Welcome to the Black Parade, both currently sitting at zero wins, two losses. Uh, and on the blue side, we're going to have Kid Win from OC Esports Broncos on this Cho'Gath in the top lane, Gangplank buys beat Bitcoin. Uh, with the Jarvin in the jungle, Toe Knuckles in the mid lane playing this Pogue Mage that is known to be an, um, what's it called? Zig 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 And in the bot lane duo, we have X Starfall and Enjark um, on this Sever Galio duo. And my name is Kin. I'm going to be your color caster joined by um, Fury. And I'm going to be the play by play caster today. And I'll be introducing for you guys the red side. Oh, it looks like we're going to have a little bit of a trade action going in the top side jungle. Nothing too interesting, though. All right. So we got Frogman444 on set in the top side. Afro Boy97 playing uh, Lilia in the jungle. We got B Pots on Cinder in the mid lane. Fire Burning Blue on Kaisa in the bot side. Along with her support, Smirks42. And that will be the Welcome to the Bronze Parade. An interesting rune choice for the Saver. Um, currently, Saver's most popular rune choice is Dark Harvest, and they usually opt for this Lethality Poke uh, Saver, but she has opted for the uh, Lethal Tempo Saver, which does a lot more team fight damage and is better for those long skirmishes where she actually gets to use the Lethal Tempo correctly um, and for that long time. So, very interested to see how this lane plays out as she is not playing this. A poke. Poke ADC. Uh, so it seems like Lilia is going to be taking the top side jungle. Do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, Lilia starting the top side. Probably looking to clear top towards. She is going to go straight towards her Krugs. Uh, doing a top clear. And might be looking for something here in the top side. As Frogman is uh, getting pushed into. Uh, just opting to take some trades instead of pushing the wave. So Lilia can very well look for something in the top side. Um, get some help after looking in the top side to, towards the scuttle. And we see a flash going down. Oh, and it seems like first blood will be going down to Sivir as Fire Burning Blue kept on to her flash and was being a little bit too greedy as that uh, as as Galio's taunt range was just barely enough to get her get her CC'd and uh, yeah she'll fall almost instantly as the amount of damage that all three of those champions put onto her just obliterated her HP bar so that'll be the first kill of the game going towards um, Starfall Meanwhile while all of this that was happening Lilia was looking to try to go into the enemy top side jungle as she did notice that Jarvin had ganked bot side trying to punish that but did not opt for that when Cho'Gath rotated bot to prevent her from entering the jungle uh, very well played by Kidwin on this Choga. And oh. now as we see there, both junglers are just continuing to full clear um, in the top stage. We can engage to short trade going down. Yeah, you better not fight set like that, Kidwin, because he's just going to obliterate you. He does a lot of damage, and he's able to uh, dish it out at an early game way more than you are. And especially when Cho'Gath isn't as tanky or has as many stacks as he should have early game, um, that's just not going to be a fun time for Kidwin. Interesting first buy by the side of uh, X Starfall, as he does decide to pick up this coal with the first blood gold. Um, to help get that early item faster oh, as he does finish his call but um, I would have preferred to go something more aggressive like <laughs> oh here we go one of you on top lane frogman versus kid win and it seems like kid will have to uh, be forced to flash away in order to just stay alive barely his top side jungler can come in as soon as he finishes blue buff so it'll be kind of greedy for frogman to stay and that's exactly what he'll be doing so We'll see how this pans out in a few seconds here. Looks like J4 will just be walking straight into lane. Kid, um, Seth still does have, have his flash though, and he'll be using it to get out of there alive. So that'll be both flashes down for the top laners. 
and yeah, coming back to Starfall, Starfall opting for this cool, which is a smart thing against this uh, Kai'Sa Nautilus bot lane. Kai'Sa Nautilus, one of the strong, strongest bot lane duos, uh, followed, um, only led by um, this Senna Tom Kench, but it's it's still very strong. So, although it is respectful, I would have liked to see something else. Oh. And the top side, Kid Win gets his soul kill onto Frogman. Frogman not respecting Kid Win. He does manage to get this Grasp with the Undying proc and take down Frogman with that extra magic damage. And here we go, Batsa. We're having a little bit of a skirmish too. Injark taunts up the Nautilus, but unfortunately, just sheer tankiness of Nautilus is not enough for him to fully commit to that. And top side, it was pretty interesting. It was a pretty interesting fight. Kid Win got his silence out before Frogman could actually throw down his shield and his Q, so. That was a little bit unfortunate for Frogman. Yeah, now Frogman on the bad side of this fight, currently sitting 16 CS down and might be losing the wave as it has nearly crashed onto his tower. A kid win managed to salvage his TP, just walks straight into lane, so he does have this TP advantage that he can use around the map. And uh lilia might be having might be trying to make a move somewhere here soon as i don't think she has shown much presence but j4 has been shown top side and both bot side yeah and with lilia she does have a lot of play making potential but uh that comes after she hits level six she's currently just farming towards six uh sitting a level above j4 comfortably farming her jungle uh looking to maybe Start getting some wards around this dragon pit that has been slight, very contested by OC Esports Broncos uh, as they have full bot control in the top side. We see another small engage going down. Yeah, but Kidwin is now level 6. Frogman, that might not be the decision you want to make. And for a player who's already down taking this dragon, there's absolutely no no, no pressure from, uh, from Welcome to the Bronze Parade for this dragon, so I guess it'll be a free dragon. Oh. That is not what you want to happen. Game plank buys BTC. You want to you want to hit those smites and execute it. Uh, yeah, and as I was saying, Lily is just farming. She is about to hit level six. Um, should just need to clear the whoops and the reds to get that level six and start doing things around the map. But as it stands right now, she has not done as much as Jarvin has done in the jungle. And now the second dragon is going to be... No, wait, is that Cloud? Yeah, yeah. That, that is that, that, that Cloud. Is... What do you think the third dragon is going to be then? Third dragon, I'm hoping that it is an explosive, uh, mind-blowing Inferno. So the, the map can change, get rid of some extra walls, and also provide that extra damage. And for that, if there is a team who gets Infernal Soul, they that extra burst that comes at the beginning of, your, of the team fights. But meanwhile, we see Lila just uh, clearing top set. She did not hit level 6, probably missed one of the Scuttles. So was not able to get that extra experience uh, that Scuttles do provide. Uh, but after she finished her top oh, side... Beepot going in. Six. Oh, and on Toe Knuckles right now. It seems like Toe Knuckles will have his W option to get out of there alive. Unfortunately for Beepot, his ultimate will not be down. But both summoners are still up. I know you, very uh, you smartly played. Very smartly played by Toe Knuckles using that Satchel to jump out and saving his flash um, and trade for that ultimate. And after this lane, Toe Knuckles can play more aggressively now that he does. Uh, his enemy does. Oh, Hook Lance. Hot side, Hook Lance on a sack. Starfall, he's going to have to heal in order to try to get out of there alive. Both players are taunted up and he's going to go back in. Holy shit, Starfall going huge as he gets a kill for himself. Smirka flashes and to get the trade kill, but Anjark is there to finish him off before he can get out of there in time. Now, top side, we have three players crashing down. It seems like Gameplank buys BC and knows that there is an award down. But this is all going. This is going to be. It's all going to depend on how Frogman wants to play this now. If he wants to try to just get out of there safely, I think that might be the best decision. But then again, he's going to. He, the pressure that is getting placed by these two players, he knows that his mid laner can now just shove it down and hopefully maybe do something here. But oh, here we go. Rift Herald has been dropped. And let's see how this plays down. Okay, to win, bopping it. And uh, ultimate's going to get dropped. Kid went flashing out of there, trying to stay alive. And this might be a 1v2 for Frogman, but he's going to get slowed down. Down to about less than 10% HP. TP coming in here. Teleport. 
who is this going to be? And it's going to be Syndra, but unfortunately she will not have enough movement speed. Or, oh, but she does actually go and throw her combo down, but she gets knocked up. Unfortunately, that will slow her enough to allow both Toe Knuckles and Kid Win to get out of there alive. These situations, you have to question how much pressure is good pressure because yes, they were pressuring top lane. Yes, they were. They managed to get the Rift Herald off and get three turret planes down. But Toe Knuckles lost so much in the mid lane. Uh, now it will be one level down of XP to this Syndra, but will be down 22 CS. And Syndra will manage to pick up um, this half a wave that is currently stacking in the mid lane and shove it back into, so causing even more uh, bleed damage into Toe Knuckles. Here we go, a dive's going to be initiated, but unfortunately J4 is there. That is not what Smirks wants as he gets ulted down and absolutely obliterated. We got coming in from the skies, unfortunately not being able to connect with anybody. And Jara going in once more, that's a little bit too aggressive. Game playing by Speed C gets taken down to about 5% HP. That's a very, very tasty looking snack of a Jarvan. While huge ultimate from Ziggs coming in blows up Afro Boy's HP bar. Now this is going to be a sticky situation for Afro Boy. He has to try to get out of there alive. Flash is coming in. Afro Boy on less than one, on less than 10% HP. He's going to get taunted down and bada bing, bada boom. And Jara is going to slam him right into the ground and send him back to the fountain. Starfall gets manages to get an auto attack before um, Fire Burning Blue and his Syndra mid lane decide to disengage and play it safely. Yes, although this dive was done very well, it was on the side of Welcome to the Bronze Parade to mess up. Uh, they did not manage to uh, punish the Jarvan correctly. They brought him down and they decided to stay there longer and longer and longer. And by that time, X Starfall and more people managed to show up there, causing this dive. This a situation that was potentially good for them uh, would have been a one for one to turn into a two for zero. Mm hmm. And now this strike is up in at 15 seconds. In 15 seconds, we'll be able to, I think, yeah, we'll be able to see what the next, next dragon is. Currently, the top lane just uh, pretty much a a win for Kid Win as he is just shoving lanes under a uh, Frogman's tower, maybe potentially looking to take down this tower and take the first tower of the game uh, with this pressure that he is holding top lane. Uh, we see J4 hovering top side, uh, but Lydia is the first to respond there. Kid Win gets flashed on, ulted down. Now, another ult is going to put him straight to sleep. Frogman just going to bop him to wake him up before sending him. Back to the fountain with the extra 300 gold in his pocket. And although Gangplank buys Bitcoin was in the top side, he did not notice what was going on until it was too late. He tried going there, but by that time, the load scene lullaby had been used by Lilia uh, and the suplex had already been dropped by Set, leaving Kidwin in a very, very dire situation and ultimately just having to back off. Uh, lane should be swapping more towards set uh, side now that he ma has managed to pick up a kill but it's still not going to be an easy win for a kid um, kid win if he does try to go in and uh. and slowly but surely the golden lead is accumulating for OC esports broncos as they have managed to pick up the first dragon potentially looking to pick up this second one and sitting in a 2k gold lead advantage over Welcome to the Bronze Parade. And I think you were right. I believe it is an Infernal Dragon. That is the next dragon. But we shall see after this dragon is taken. And yep. yeah, we are going to see uh, OC Esports Broncos looking to take onto this uh, dragon uncontested. Should be able to pick it up. And it is not going to be an Infernal Dragon. This would be a, a Water Dragon. Uh, all goes down. As Starfall dropping it all a little bit preemptively, but unfortunately not being able to catch off and catch anybody off guard. Oh, so I guess you can only see it after um, after the dragon gets taken. I see. Yeah. And while all of that was happening, Kinwin manages to actually pick up first tower, but there is a skirmish topside. Yeah, Frogman and Kinwin are just too tanky right now to kill each other within this. In a small amount of time so they'll just probably be a light trade going back and forth but it's yeah and i'm a huge fan of this blade of the ring king set uh using that blade of the ring king passes to deal more damage to kid win and later on uh gang gang tank uh, buys bitcoin 
as he is going to be dealing extra damage to those individuals who have higher amounts of health um, and should also be able to run them down, deal more damage. This set that is a damage dealer over tanks that I uh, always prefer to see it. And it looks like we might have gotten the team name switched up. Kidwin's team is apparently Welcome to the Bronze Parade. So I think we're going to have Flex go Dragon check on that before. Oh, okay. That's a little bit unfortunate. Ashu, I got, I got the wrong game in. Yeah, it's switched. Okay, so blue side is actually not going to be Welcome to the Bronze Parade, and red side is going to be OC Esports Broncos. Good to know, good to know. So welcome to the Black Parade. He's currently sitting in the lead, and he's going to get going down to the mid lane. Uh, the river, mid lane river, just quickly disengaged, yeah. coming back in. Here we go, TP coming in from Kid Win as gameplay casts the flash out of there. We got coming in from the skies, locking up two players, Frogman, Altin, RKO. Unfortunately, Anjox is just going to slam him right into the ground along with his buddy, Onyx, getting ulted down here. As, but, but, as gameplay goes back in, secures a kill. That's a double kill for Anjox, though, as unfortunately, J4 will not be the one to get the kill. Smirk's going to try to get out of there alive with his little anchor of his, but he is one big slow boy, and that is one big Galio chasing him, too. Looks like he actually might be able to get out of there alive. Unfortunately, he'll get hit up by the by Kid Wins the knockup, and that might just be enough to send him back. Flash coming out, and Jark two, takes off two flashes. That's going to actually be huge for him. As Six didn't need a flash there, so during the next team fight, I guess his team will now know that if they want to engage on Toe Knuckles, it will be a free kill. And welcome to the Black Parade playing this very sloppily. Yes, they did get the kill advantages and they could continue to chase uh, this Nautilus, but this aggression was unneeded and they will lose two, two flashes for it. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, we see X Starfall just pick up with pick up the Kai's with a fadeaway as she gets that double proc from her Q. That is one dangerous looking Sivir. I mean, she's 4 1, has pretty much, yeah, has an item already finished. And I've just, then just be careful because she'll start critting you instantly. And that's just so much damage, especially when it's two squishies, too. And another mid lane gank. B Pot's getting knocked up, sent back. And I just, there's not much he can do as Kid Win executes him and just eats him, gobbling him up, getting that extra HP stacks for himself. There must have been some miscommunication between the top and mid laner from Welcome to the Black Parade as Tonakos has expended his barrier uh, using another King Summoner that is supposed to help him survive. Uh, P probably expecting B-Pods to use that ultimate uh, and maybe bring him down some HP but does not offer that. Two towers will be going over to the side of Welcome to the Black Parade and they're looking for a third. Oh, and as man. all of this has happened, the gold lead has escalated to 6k for Welcome to the Black Parade. Uh, welcome to the Bronze Parade on this blue side. And yeah, it's very good plays coming out from both sides so far, but it will seem like but but it will be Welcome to the Bronze Parade that uh, gets the advantages in these fights. Advantages and gold exactly where they wanted to be. Currently this bot lane duo is sitting with Eight kills in total, eight out of eleven. That's nearly eighty-nine percent, if I'm not mistaken. And one completed item, looking to complete his second item on X Starfall, uh, on this server, who's just going to be dealing massive damage in this team fight with that AOE, with that lethal tempo, with the ricocheting boomerangs that are known to be server specialty. And now Dragon is going to be coming up in about 10 seconds here. It seems like it might go untested once more to welcome to the Bronze Parade as they're just so strong right now. They are very strong. We see level advantages uh, from almost everyone. Um, never mind, we just see level advantages from this bot lane duo. On the other side, we have OC uh, Broncos Esports sitting with like gold advantages on the top lane, on the jungle, and on the... Yeah, just top and jungle. The top and jungle has been strong for uh, the Broncos, while Welcome to the Bronze Parade has had, a very, has had a very strong bot side. Very strong bot side indeed, and also that bot side advantage will allow them to take those Street Dragons, which will be another huge lead for them. Afro Boy game might get cut out here, and it looks like an anchor will not hit from S Smirks. Smirks stoned them very well. Uh, use that hook to 
but disengage, not necessarily looking to catch someone. Just make sure that no one is in its field of vision so they don't get caught out. And although this was a very good disengage, if they, if Welcome to the Bronze Parade had engaged there, they were, would not have been in the best situation as they had four members here in this top side. They had Set, Lilia, Syndra, and this Nautilus in this top jungle. So if a fight were to break out, it would have been a 3v4. And uh, everything just be set in. Right now. Yeah, just resets coming from both sides. Potentially looking to set up for this dragon. Uh, welcome to the Bronze Parade. Should be able to melt this with X Starfall currently sitting in uh, one and a half items. About to complete the mythic item. I'm interested to see whether it's going to be a Kraken Slayer or a Gale Force. Both of these items can be built from the current components. And they are looking to take on this Baron. Baron currently sitting at 8,400 HP. Going down very quickly as I'm speaking. And there will be little to no response over from the Broncos. Broncos will notice that there is a control ward there and should start hovering topside. But Kaisa is not going to be in the fight. And the blue team will secure this dragon with the feast from the Cho'Gath. Yes, they might actually. Oh, that is not what you want. We're going to have another fight coming in. B pass already getting so low in the fight. This is not what the, their team wants. There's so many also going in. And this is just a. This is just a blood fat. This isn't even fair for uh, for OC Esports as their whole team just gets obliterated, ace by um, by Welcome to the Bronze Parade, and I think that might be the game as they can just run it down and push it down instantly. And Welcome to the Bronze Parade played that very smartly. They realized the Kaiser was not on there, in there, so they decided to commit to the fight. Um, although Kaiser's not ahead, she's currently only one item, a zero four one. Without the AD carry at this point of the game. A 5v4 is usually going to be won by the numbers advantage. And no matter how strong the top side from the Broncos was, it was again just a 4v5 into Welcome to the Bronze Parade. And Welcome to the Bronze Parade capitalized off of that, managed to get the ace, and we'll be looking to take both the top and bot lane tier 2 towers. What do you think is going to be needed for... Uh... OC Esports to come back. Uh, first things first, they should be able to look for a pick here into the Saber. Saber manages to ult away. Uh, will, uh, man will not manage to spell shield the uh, Loting Lullaby. And yeah, that is a shutdown for b pots which is huge gold. And that's another shutdown for J4. Can win already TP'd in here. He's going to try to do as much as he can. But once more, that is four players up in the top side. And that will be a double kill for b pots Huge gold going to the Syndra, which is very well needed. Just like you said, in order to try and get back alive into this game. And it feels like I spoke it into existence, or I thought it into existence. But they needed to get that kill onto X Starva, who had this one key. A gold shutdown. Now you need to pick up the other two shutdowns that are on the board onto this Six, onto this uh, Galio, who are going to be able to give them a nearly 1k gold if they are to be caught out by the enemy. Um, but next things that should be coming online, um, they should be able to prevent the blue side from getting Dragon Soul. If they prevent Dragon Soul, they give themselves more time. And they do have this um, kind of scaling composition. It does not scale as good as the welcome to the bronze parade but it should be able to contest if they manage to pick up some items get some dragons under their belt and they are looking to look fight at this dragon pit uh, it's gonna be a 5v4 as togat is topside without teleport so this might be the game deciding fight if it goes wrong for the broncos and here we go 15 seconds until we see what may be the final battle of the game every uh, both teams maybe just seems to be just playing a little bit of a vision battle right now but that is a lot of damage already going on the frogman not exactly what you want to start off this fight uh, but the plan is there for him to heal up and here we go dragon will now get started will they drag it out of the baron uh, out of the pit and it seems like they won't and jark frontlining going in and it seems like taunt will get dropped now that is huge damage already going in king uh, king uh, game playing but uh, balsi gets a double kill uh, Slay the Lullaby going down, try to just delay a little bit so that his teammates can't get out of there alive. And that is a blue team secured dragon. That is four dragons now. That is Ocean Soul while their top slayer kid win. They didn't even need him for that fight. Takes down the top side turrets. 
Exactly, and even if they had lost that dragon, they would have managed to pick up bot and top tower with wave just pushing in. Uh, they, uh, Kid Wade manages to pick up two towers looking onto the in him, and now that he does have this ocean soul, he should be a, a bit less fearful of the poke coming out. He can just tank it. They have managed to crack Bronco's base open as they pick up the third, the second inhibitor looking onto the third, and this is looking like a dire game for the Broncos. I mean, at this point, it is pretty much... Oh, yeah, just look at that Sivir's damage, Jesus. Three players already chunked down at least 30% of their health. And uh, if they want to fight here again, this is going to just be the game. I'm pretty sure... Uh, I'm pretty sure... Welcome to the Bronze Parade can honestly just run it down right now with this, with these with these minions and probably secure the game. But let's see if they'll play it safe, and it seems like they will. Yeah, and although they could have decided to end right there, um, it would have given them a slight it would have given the broncos a slight hope if they managed to come out on top in that fight very unlikely to come out on top just because of the item just because of the soul but you never know there could have been some mechanical outplay that comes in maybe the pentakill from frogman or alfro or even this kaisa uh, so the smarter play was to recall here regroup uh, capitalize on these items that you will be picking up as you recall and then heading straight towards baron but the possibility, the exciting thing that could have happened was one last fight at the enemy's base to end it all. Mm -hmm. Baron's going to be up in about 40 seconds and welcome to the Bronze Parade. We'll be moving towards it, putting some vision down, hopefully, and just taking out, taking out their opponent's wards to make sure that they can secure this vision victory for Baron. And yeah, yeah, there's there's gonna be no uh to decide whether they're gonna stay in base or look to contest this Baron. Uh, both things could loosen the game. There could be a potential backdoor if there's someone not in base, or if they take the wrong fight at the Baron, it's gonna cost them the game as well. So potentially Afro bo Afro boy should just look for a steal here. That's the only thing he can really do to salvage the game for now because they are not gonna win the fight at the Baron pit. Uh, and it's B Pots and Afro Boy who are both edging closer to this Baron pit. B Pots just already chunked down to half HP. And it seems, let's see what Afro Boy can do here. Oh, he flashes in a little bit too late. Blue Team has secured that Baron Asher, and X Starfall will be the one to kill Afro Boy. And here we go. Here is the run down to the base as five players um, from Welcome to the Bronze Parade will go as a goon squad together and end the game together as there's only four players remaining for OC Esports. Two teams take at zero wins, two losses. It is Welcome to the Bronze Parade who will be picking up their first win here in the Yordo Division Gold broadcast. Yeah, there's not much anybody can do here. Frogman is trying to do something, but J4 just does so much damage everybody on their team just does so much damage and bada bing bada boom a double kill for Sivir before the nexus has fallen and 21 6 score line will be the will end the game 21 and 6 with a 14,000 gold advantage for welcome to the bronze parade managed to pick up all, every single objective on the board um could have been a perfect game if they had not died in the top side uh, and the saber had not been cut out a couple of times, but objective wise they played everything perfectly managed to get everything that they wanted and everything they needed to secure this victory um, and I'm Interested to see how their team is gonna play out to, as the series goes because they have shown some improvement and some shown some control of the map if they continue to play like this Yeah, welcome to the bronze spray just played that game accidentally they got the early game leads and advantages from getting those first bloods and picks and they just snowballed that into a game win with 21 kills by the end of this, uh, after they'd taken down the Nexus. And uh, stay with us as we will be moving on to the next game of the day, Glacial Omen versus Gecko Slammers Armageddon. So we will be right back after this break.
Welcome back to game two from the Yordles division, Gold Cap. Here we are joined by Glacial Omen and Gecko Slammer Armageddon on the red side. We're going to be seeing a very interesting team, um, team-oriented team fight style coming from both teams as uh, they are both sitting at two wins and zero losses. On the blue side from Glacial Omen, we have Ganga, Ganja White Knight on this Aatrox top lane, very dominating, very strong top lane pick. Hidden Torture on this Lilia, which is one of the staple jungle picks uh, for now. Ishan on this Pantheon in the mid lane, very aggressive, not really seen much. And ADC, uh, give me a second, ADC gap too big on with his bot lane duo, Haley sidekick on this Kai'Sa Janna duo. And we're going to have an invade coming in from JSM. And I'll be introducing for you guys the red side today, which is also Gecko Slammers. I'm going to get on. So we have Levi's playing Renekton in the top side, Panther 553, 212. Playing Mumu in the jungle. We've got Seymour in the mid lane on Diana. They could be Keeper Tristana and Silver Spade 10 on that Morgana and the bot side. Ooh. Uh, We're just going to see an aggressive positioning from uh, Gecko Omen's jungle and topside as they are on this enemy topside jungle. We'll catch out GSM Levi here. Uh, Levi's has to run down towards the mid lane. That's going to be a ton of damage. Ton of He's going to be forced to go back early. Missing a few minions for uh, his first, first wave. Yeah, and... Lydia has managed to pick up Dark their first Dark Harvest of this game, which is going to give her that extra little damage whenever there's enemies on low HP. Shouldn't have to worry about procking it too often as she is a jungler, but it will definitely man matter for some extra damage when she looks for these ganks. Uh-huh. And... Yeah, like you said, these team comps are both really team fight oriented. What do you think is going to be the gimmick for both sides in order to win the team fights? Team fight for, uh, for Glacial Omen. They're going to have to kind of 4 1 with Ishan on one of the side lanes, uh, split pushing and looking to, you know, put that pressure on the side lane. And if GSM looks to engage onto them, Ishan on this Pantheon should just uh, starfall straight into the back lane, do some damage and catch them by surprise and get rid of that numbers advantage that GSM think that they should have. Meanwhile, we just see a small trade in the mid lane going down. Oh, Ishan getting ignited and absolutely... Oh, he's going to be the loser of that trade as Diana secures the first blood. A very nice play coming from Seymour to lock down Ishan and ignite him down all the way to... all the way to zero HP. Yes, but is it really worth a kill when Wave is completely on Ishan's side? He doesn't even have to waste CP. Uh, walk straight to lane, will not lose uh, many minions, if any. Uh, while meanwhile, Seymour on this Diana will have to expend that flash and ignite to secure the kill. Um, and also, yes, it's first blood. Ishan is still in a very comfortable po position with this flash and teleport on his on his body. And... Uh... And as it stands right now, Gold Lead has already began to swung for the side of GSM as they are currently sitting at 5.6k gold, 5.7 which is um, a mere 500 but at 3 minutes, 500 is a decent amount of gold to start accelerating your game. And... Both junglers are seeming to be pretty playing pretty passive as no ganks are really... Oh, actually, looks like we might have a mid lane gank, or it's just going to be an invade into Crows. So yeah, both junglers seem to be playing really passive. Not showing much presence anywhere. And this passive style of jungle, we see engage coming into top side, but we are then pound down into bot side, indicating that this disengage will happen. Um, and although this style of jungling is pretty popular here, it's not going to be beneficial for a Mumu. Actually, this is a huge play coming out from Amumu as Ishan almost gets taken down once more. Uh, he plays a little bit too aggressive and Amumu connects his uh, little bandage toss. And that's going to be a stun. Top side, we're going to have a 1v1. GSM Levi's and Ganga, Ganja White Knight both exchanging flashes. And unfortunately, the observer will be going somewhere else. So we will not be able to see who actually ends up winning that fight just yet. 
just as I was gonna say, a Mumu has to go for those ganks, has to go for those early engages because as the game goes on, he is just a tank. He's not gonna be able to do much for his team if he has not already helped his lane. Uh, Lily on the other side can just comfortably farm, get that level experience, get that level six, and then after that look for something there. But it is a Mumu who should be able to capitalize on these early ganks, on these early playmaking. Uh, things and he almost managed to help his millionaire secure another kill of uh, putting them on the board but Ishtam playing that very well using the shield to block some of that damage and mitigating some of that blood loss that they had the junglers towards this spot side um it's gonna be kind of scary here we go we got the flash coming in Haley sidekick will slow unfortunately not being able to knock up but here we go H hidden tor hidden torture going in naked beekeeper also hopping in trying to get that last auto attack which he does connect and he before he gets taken down by adc gap too big and and that's the cat Janet right there well we we will see we see in a move going in right there and just manages to clean up those extra scraps that were the lady on this horse uh, the janitor Mumu coming in secures another kill as ADC to gap too big. He's a little bit playing a little bit too aggressive too. He might get obliterated. Flash coming out. I don't believe that bind hit it. Got top side both an all dropping as Jason Levi's has now hit level six. God got the white knight. This is not looking too good for you. He's gonna try to dash away and that will be enough to uh, to open the get space between him and GSM Levi's so that GSM Levi's do not have any abilities or an auto attack to kill him. And can we just talk about that Janna flash into the engage? Like, Chad Janna right there. I would love to see that in my solo queue games. Even if we did not win the trade, I think I still think that that Chad Janna deserves some praise. And it was a one for two trade in the bot lane. Um, but as it stands right now, GSM currently holding a 1400 lead over GE. Uh, Glacial, though I can't even speak today, uh, GE. So should be pretty exciting as the game turns out and we are starting to see these leads across the map. Like you said, the Janna, I don't know. If I saw that in my solo queue games, I'd probably just tilt off the face of the earth because I'd be like, what the hell are you doing? But yeah, that, that's just me though. Yeah, two different trains of thought. I'm always a fan of Chad Janna. Janna's that are not afraid to frontline not afraid to tank some of that damage and not afraid to initiate as if they were playing uh, tank support. Initiation will be happening in the stop side. GSM Levi's trying to secure a kill on Ganja White Knight before he gets taken down. We got the Lullaby coming in. Hidden Torture secures the X kill for himself. As now we got bot side. ADC gap too big getting blasted down by Naked Beekeeper. We got Beekeeper throwing in a little bit of a moves between each auto attack. Um, Unfortunately, that would not be enough to secure kills, but that will be tons of damage done. Well, Panther in his topside jungle, along with his mid laner, will absolutely obliterate Hidden Torture's HP bar, securing another kill for their team. Seymour using that mid prior very well, uh, realizing that Samumu is going to be looking for a, a little cheese there, as Hidden Torture has just gone top and is potentially looking for a scuttle, uh, decides to walk up and secure that kill for his for himself and extend that lead uh, currently sitting at an 8 CS lead with two kills over the Pantheon and I do believe this should have been a Pantheon favorite matchup as he does have more burst and more damage as the fight prolongs but Seymour playing this lane very smartly using uh, that electrocute very well engaging when he does have the electrocute in the full combo to engage and then quickly disengage before the fight turns to the other side. And Dragon is up. Both sides will not be looking to put any priority on it. So I guess they'll be playing a delayed dragon fight. Uh, delayed dragons. Yeah, we're not gonna. We're not really seeing the jungler's path towards dragons. Uh, most the both of them are just continuing to farm, uh, disregarding the dragon. But it is GSM who's gonna have a little bit of that control in the river with two control wards sitting in the bottom bush and in the tri bush in the river. Yeah, GSM actually has a ton of wards on the map. That's a ton of vision, in, especially in the rivers. And Hidden Torture potentially looking to take on Dragon here. Has managed to uh, spot out that control ward in the bottom side. Uh, pings going down from GSM as they are potentially looking to go on to here. But it looks like 
Hidden Torture might be getting collapsed onto here by four members of GSM. And before anything happens, they just walk away and stall out this dragon fight even longer. Ooh, but Hidden Torture finds Seymour hiding in that bush, and Seymour is now going to be a, on a killing spree after that kill. And they should be, and this should be first dragon going over to the side of GSM. But instead of going to a dragon, Kitamumu decides to invade. A um, little bit of questionable decision. Like, yes, you're going to put them behind, but you're also putting your team behind by not getting that dragon. And as I say that, he is going to start heading towards the dragon pit. So, managed to actually capitalize off of the death by both getting that that enemy jungle and heading towards dragon. Oh, but we got GSM Levi's versus Ganja White Knight in this top side. Ganja will drop his ultimate. Uh, both players will actually drop their ultimates. Now this is just a fight out whether who will be able to sustain each sustain sustain and a red team will have slain the dragon as gsm levi goes in ganja white knight staying a little bit too stay a little bit too too long as his ultimate just gets faded out as the time has the time has passed for us i cannot speak today as the time has and passed GSM. and and yeah as, Le as and levi's will be able to win this because kill yeah go on oh. <laughs> uh, levi's will be <laughs> Yeah, Le Levi's will be the one that secures the kill and probably get himself a turret plate also. And GSM, Levi using that slash and dash very smartly, does manage to wait out this uh, ultimate as you do mention before. And Ganja having to try to run away, but again, the slash and dash towards him just manages to take him down. Uh, adding to this goldie that GSM does have at the moment, uh, it's around 3k. And this Diana playing, again, very small, has finished this a mythic item the night harpster which is currently my favorite ap item yeah that's a little bit of an engage from bot side as silver spade dropped his ultimate there unfortunately not being able to secure either stuns as um as uh, kaisa and jana were able to step out of it now we got another engage adc gap too big uh not being able to do much as Morgana did drop her black shield onto Naked Gee Beekeeper, which did um, help out with the damage. Now, John is going to be the one that's rooted. Unfortunately, Naked Beekeeper, Bee Beekeeper will not be able to capitalize on that. But even though they were not able to capitalize off of that, they were able to uh, pick up CS and continue to pressure here in this bot lane. Amumu currently coming back to pick up his daily dose of chickens from the enemy jungle, um, you know, making sure that he is well fed and putting Hidden Torture even further behind in this jungle. And now we got four players gathering on the bot side. Ishan and Hidden Torture has spotted out Panther, and Panther will be the one to engage, dropping that ultimate. Same more going in too, now on a rampage. He's gonna get hit by that little bit though. GS and Levi still teleporting in, and that'll be a kill secure for GS and Levi's. Five players now on this bot side. Ganja White Knight trying to go in, but unfortunately there's gonna be three players there, and oh, he actually does have a lot of damage to sustain as he manages to stay alive for that long. Uh, but unfortunately the team has, has now regrouped, and it will be ADC. Gap too big and Haley's sidekick are going to be chased down under their turret. They might, not, they might not even be able to survive under this turret. Yes, and Levi's though, taking a little bit of free damage for questionable reasons. And Naked Beekeeper trying to clear that wave as fast as possible, shoving this wave in and maybe either diving, no, or just going back to reset. Although it is G, um, I thought it's Blue Side who does have these global advantage. Oh. They are not utilizing them to the full potential. It is GSM who are uh, exploit, who are using these TPs aggressively, looking to do places on the map. And even though they have, they are going against the Pantheon, who has this grand starfall. The Pantheon has not been able to use it for his team. He has not even used it once. If I, I have not seen it yet. So, if we want to see Galatia Omen get into this game. Uh, Kind of stop GSM from getting even more traction. We're gonna have to see Ishan on this Pantheon look to play around the map, maybe play around topside where we are always looking to see skirmishes happening as we are right now. But he does not do that, he's just a staying mid lane playing for himself and losing a lot for that. We just saw Rook here get dropped in the mid lane. Unfortunately, that would not be able to secure the tower. Um... And now we have something interesting as Dragon is up and 
about a minute here. About a minute, and it is going to be the GSM who are going to be contesting for, for Vision a bit uh, more aggressively than a Glacial Glacial Esports. Um, they're, they're just sending their Janna in for the Vision fight, and it is not necessarily paying off. Janna is trying to clear out some of these wards, putting down some wards herself, but it is 3v1 in, these, in this ward battle. I don't think oh actually topside a little fight going on lullaby is going to get dropped onto a mumu um yeah but a mumu is one takey boy as <laughs> you can re you can't really engage on that ishan hp bar he finds Seymour. that's not that's one of the champions that he does not want to find as he gets stunned down panther will be the one who secures that kill now uh, gsm levi's goes on a haley side click forcing him to flash away that peel is going to be enough to they uh to push back Renekton and uh Diana. Yeah, this Lily has fallen a bit behind in the jungle, uh currently down a uh, one and a half le one level onto this Amumu and is currently 27 TS down as well. We'll opt for this Moonstone build path to provide more utility for the team. And although Moonstone Moon Moonstone is a very strong item, without the, the Lily going AP, it's gonna like Limit some of the damage that they have and it's gonna make it easier for GSM to itemize against them just by stacking armor. And with this mountain dragon that they managed to pick up first, if there is no AP there and they just start stacking armor, it's gonna make it harder for Glacial o Glacial Omen Esports to find some of that damage during the fight. Inferno blazes and it will be the third dragon of the game that is, is an Inferno. So is that what you were looking for, Kun? <laughs> Uh, not in this game particularly. In this game, I would have wanted to actually see an Ocean Soul because these are, this is going to be very reliant on these team fights that are going to happen. And because it is going to be an Infernal Soul, it's just going to make the team fights go a little bit faster. So, not going to be able to see these long, elongated team fights that are going to be determined by team co cohesion and coordination. So, it's going to be more explosive, which is something that I do like, but it's going to be less reliant on coordination between the teams. And so we got CF more 10 uh, chatting. Who is that even a team? Yeah, Rotom is a team. I believe they played in the last season. I can't remember if they... I, I can't remember who won last season. But yeah, I know they were a team that played. And asked GSM about the Rotom's old mid laner. Ooh, what happened to Rotom's old, old mid laner? Yeah, Ronis. If I remember, it was Return of the Middle Stick or Rotom. Yeah, the Return of the Middle Stick one of the... A uh, funny team to watch, and meanwhile, as we're talking about fun, a hidden torture will be falling down to a naked beekeeper as the bomb goes off. And in the bot lane, we see another engage going down, but each one will quickly try to disengage this as this is happening, using that shield to mitigate some of that damage. But he will be falling down. Uh, having that eclipse shield will help him survive longer, but will die to the hands of Simor. Seems like they got scared of Gecko Slammers on my get on. Oh. <laughs> Hey Jebronis, how have you been? Well, I feel like this is a... Wait, was Jebronis the old millionaire? Or maybe I'm tripping here. Alright, but back to the game. Uh, Dragon... No, it's still up in three minutes. What are your thoughts on, um, on Glacial Omen coming back? Glacial Omen coming back, they have to... In order for this to happen, they have to play around their Kai'Sa, which it looks like they are doing, sending her in the mid lane, um, helping her get more waves. And she is currently their only and biggest threat to GSM. Uh, having finished her mythic item, looking to continue to farm up and get closer to her second item. But before any of that happens, it's just going to be a farm fest for a G Galatia Omen before they get into this fight. Um, and Kaisa kind of has to look for these uh, solo picks. She cannot look the team fight because her team is a little bit far behind. They're 5,000 gold behind. And... With 5,000 gold behind, as an ADC in a team fight, you're going to feel like you're not doing anything when you get popped. And... The team's turret has been destroyed. That is the first mid lane turret to go down. And now that will allow... Uh, I believe... That will allow GSM to roam around the map a little bit more. 
collapse on certain places that they need if they need to. Yeah, well, and they're potentially looking for something in the top side. Um, it is going to be hidden torture who's going to catch them out in, the, in her top jungle. Will tell um, Ganja White Knight to be a little bit careful for this dive and actually pushes the side of DSM out of the jungle, protecting her top laner from dying to this dive. Oh, uh, but it wow. It's going to be GSM aggressively starting this Baron here at. Tw wait, not Baron. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, is, it is Baron. It is Baron. Starting Baron aggressively here as his Seymour is just going to obliterate Kaisa in the mid lane. Another kill in the pocket for him. And yeah, Baron, this is very, very aggressive, but Seymour is just on the outskirts, zoning off anybody who, is, uh, who dares to come into his reach. And yeah, here we go. Baron has not been secured, and let's see how GSM decides to play this. So the only reason I thought I thought it wasn't Baron is because the top half of my screen is frozen. So it says that it's currently 19 minutes and 9 seconds. And I was like, wait, at 19 minutes and 9 seconds, Baron does not spawn. So I thought it was like a visual bug or something. But no, it will be Baron picked up by the side of GSM. Um, I am still unable to see the gold, the gold leader culminated. Um, I think, um, okay, it refreshed now. Uh, currently sitting at a, nearly an 8,000 gold lead over Glacial Omen Esports and should be able to look to take this dragon without much of a contest because they're just so far ahead. Um, they managed to one-shot their ADC as... It's not necessarily too surprising because, you know, ADCs are weak. Um, but this Diana just escalating her lead even further, currently sitting at 602 with a 650 gold bounty. Completed two items and making for her third item as they just managed to pick up this Inferno Soul, putting them at an, uh, this Inferno Dragon, putting them at Soul Point. Mm -hmm. Soul Point it is, say more once more, along with this uh, Kaiser this time in the spot side, probably looking to siege down his turret, and Mumu also heading down here, as Sean will might get dived here, and uh, the Banished Toss doesn't need it, as Panther just flashes straight in onto Ishan. The bind unfortunately missing and TP coming in, but that will be a tower to go down. And uh, top side, we will have another engage coming in from Hidden Treasure. GS and Levi's dropping his Dominus, flashing coming out, and that will be enough to dodge a few skill shots. As now the Lodabai is in play, he is now asleep. Getting woken up once more. Smite going down too, but Jason Levi's just healing and doing so much damage that two v one chance, two v one potential. As uh, Seymour just uh, secures another kill, becoming cod like now, and unfortunately GSM Levi's will not be able to sustain or do enough damage long enough for his dominance to remain in that fight, and it will be Ganja White Knight who secures that kill. Despite GSM Levi going down, I feel like he played this very well, putting pressure in the top lane. Uh, getting two members to respond to him and while all of that was happening they managed to pick up the bottom inhib the bottom neck yeah inhibitor turret uh, and the bottom inhib looking to take into the mid lane inhib so this top lane pressure very well just translated into his team getting two inhib and they're looking further for a further engage that is quickly denied by ganja white knight as he does flash out of that situation no, uh, looks like they are indecisive right now as they want to stay. Oh, and they do decide to stay as their top laner GSM Levi's is now TPing in. That uh, cannon minion might be able to do a little bit of damage to the turrets, but uh, this is not exactly what they want for Glacial Omen. Ganja White Knight taking down to less than a half HP as Naked Beekeeper with his auto attacks just doing so much damage and chunking down his HP bar. And now we have Ishan getting rooted again. These he's black, these binds coming in from uh, from Morgana are just going huge right now. Fortunately, they will not be able to capitalize on it, but it will be enough to shake Glacial Omen's morale. And Glacial Omen currently trying to make this into a stalemate, prevent GSM from getting any more out of what they already have. Sitting down at 10, a nearly 10k gold deficit. Um, with nothing on the board for them they are getting their jungle their jungle camps just taken from them in front of them and there's really nothing they can do because they have to defend the base they have to stay safe they have to prevent the base from breaking down even further and it is going to be gsm levi who's going to head towards this top to try to crack the last portion of this base um still has a long way to go with all three towers uh sta is still standing so it's going to be a bit of a slow pass, but it should happen as we see pinks going down. 
that they are potentially looking to rotate to this top side. And yes, GSMB Red decides to stay and further pressure this lane. Further pressure it is as Tristana and uh, her top laner will now take down the first turret of these three lines and uh, Glacier Omen will be trying to group here trying to defend these turrets but these four boys from GSM are already looking very very scary you do not want that Levi's to engage on you you do not want to get bonded by Morgana and you do not want to be in auto attack range of the Tristana and Panther will be the one that will get advantage tossed as Sir Seymour now goes in that'll be another kill for for us for a Moo Moo and the top turret will fall and they or might not they even would... be looking for top turret they're just heading straight for the finish looking for the two rem three remember members of Glacial Omen as they are just pushing in bottom mid lane in order to get towards these Nexus Towers. This can be a 3v5 with the engage going down from Levi. Levi manages to find his damage. Seymour picking up the kill onto Aatrox. And the Lullaby will put a few players to sleep. Actually, he will get a kill out of that. So that is very nice play coming from Hidden Torture. But it will not be enough to save the game as both towers from the Nexus have fallen. And it will be in a few seconds that, that the Nexus will follow along. 418 scoreline. Huh? Oh, wait, are you? 418. Yeah, go on. Okay, 418 scoreline, three dragons for GSM. Very nice game for GSM as they managed, as they uh, secured the first kills as similar to the last game and just snowballed it with Seymour just going godlike, getting eight kills, zero deaths, and four assists. And his Mumu supporting him with that three kills, zero, three kills, zero deaths, and seven assists. This is going to put Gecko, Slammer, Armageddon in the top of the leaderboard within these teams. A Glacial Omen receiving their first loss and Gecko, Slammer, Armageddon continuing to show their dominance in the Yoros Gold Cap League. Um, should be interesting to see how they are going to continue to play. And the next game is going to be Washed Up Gaming versus Last Minute Goons who are both sitting at one win, one loss. Stick with us. and to the break. Welcome back to the final game of the Yoro Division Goal Cap Week 3. This is going to be the final game. Currently, both teams are sitting at 1-1 Washed Up Gaming here on the blue side and Last Minute Goons on the red side uh, with the game that should be able to capitalize on what we have been ex waiting for this final game. Uh, and on the blue side, we're going to be having, let me see, we're going to be having business time 15 on this on the top lane. Brindicus on this Gardner in the jungle. A uh, Kilgar on this Nico in the mid lane. Very spicy pick. I'm a fan of it. Alarm 777 with Poison 57 as the bot lane duo with Kaisa and Alistar. 
And now for the start of last minute goons, we got Telex Guy, topside playing Cho, Swag is Stupid, playing Hector in the jungles, as Sisbina on Cassiopeia in the mid lane with Regdor USMC on Sibir in the bot side, along with his duo UCO Arrow playing Karma. Two picks the Nico pick and the Sibir pick. Um, on the first game, we did see the Saber being picked, and they opted for the Lethal Tempo route. On this time, they we see the Saber going for the the Poke Dark Harvest route. And even without the Dark Harvest, we saw this huge poke that comes from the Qs uh, bring down people, bring down people's HP bars down to 70% with one single Q. So we're going to be seeing a lot more damage from this Q as the game goes on. And I want to see how much damage this Zero truly does. I'm not a fan of it, but this game is going to determine how much I like it. Um, Mino on the other side, we see Kilgar on this Nico pick. Uh, one of my favorite pocket picks is not really seen much in pro play or in a ranked solo duo, but I feel like it's hidden OP. Uh, AP ratio for the ultimate is 130%. Yes, you heard that right, 130%. Um, there has been times where I reach 900 AP and I literally just ult and one shot the entire backline. Nothing else, just ult. Um, so very excited to see how this Nico plays out, what builds they decide to go for, and how this game is going to turn out with these two very interesting picks that are supposed to like just shred those squishies. Uh huh. And. Any thoughts on the team comps? Uh, team comp as it currently stands, we're gonna see the blue side um, opting for like a complete. Uh, we're gonna it, it's gonna start off with a pick. Um, the Scarner is gonna look to uh, pull someone out of the fight. Uh, look to pull someone and just get rid of them absolutely. And then after that happens, it's gonna be a complete front to back with Killbar, Alarm, and Poison Seven looking to engage here as we see in the bot lane. Early Ignite dropped onto uh, Regdor. Well, top side business time and Telex guy are going to be doing. Yeah, but you do not want to 1v1 in Orn. That guy just does so much damage. If, uh, flash exchange is coming out from both sides. Unfortunately, I guess business time will not be able to secure that kill. And another fight in the jungle as Briticus on the Skarner is now running around. Swagger stupid. Mid laner coming in. Kilgar is going to be throwing a little bit abilities. Onto Sabrina and Sabrina will get rooted a little bit. So I guess to be getting stunned once more before the fight disengages. And it looks like both teams are out for blood. Fights coming down from both sides, and it does seem that they have mostly been for the they have mostly been for the favor of the in favor of the blue side headbutt going down pulverizer uh, on the dot and managed to stun this karma, but nothing will be happening of that. As we're gonna see this Sivir looking for some more damage. She's currently out of mana, so she will not be able to do, to do anything. Um, but fights all around the map coming in and out. And going back to the first fight, the Alistar could have done a little more if he had headbutted in the right direction. But accidentally headbutts out of the fight. Headbutts the Sivir out of the fight. So they are not able to do any follow-up without expending any summoners. So instead of like flashing in for extra damage, they decide to leave it at that and continue laning. Yeah, aggressive plays from Alistar, but I don't think they will reap exactly the benefits that he wanted and Kilgar is uh, using his ability, throwing off Swagger Stupid as he comes zooming into lane. CSD is slowly starting to accumulate for uh, Sabina on this Cassiopeia, very, very, playing very well, just stacking up that tier, uh, getting ready for that late damage that she is going to be uh, contributing to the team, and um, a little bit interesting to see how last minute goons are going to play out these team fights. Uh, they do have a lot of poke um, coming from this bot lane duo, but the top, the complete top side, um, starting at mid lane, it, they kind of like these long extended fights. Um, with Cassiopeia doing massive damage the longer the fight goes, uh, poisoning everyone on their team and just slowly whittling it down. Um, and this, depending on what build this Hecarim decides to go, uh, it's going to determine how the team fights are going to pan out for them. Uh, if he decides to go for this Trinity Force, 
um, build that is gonna like excel in team fights. It should be pretty exciting to see, but he can go for the other item, the other mythic item that, um, I forget what it's called, but it's kind of like a similar build path to Trinity Force, um, but it deals more with tanks. Um, he should not be looking to go these extended fights and should just be looking to pick out on these tanks, looking to shred them and get them out of the fight before the fight even starts. So, again, it's just going to depend on the itemization of this uh, jungler, how last many units are going to be playing these team fights. Are you talking about Divine Sunder, I believe? I do believe Divine. so. Oh, yeah, Divine, Divine Sunder. Yeah. Yeah, because that's the item that heals off based off, like, I think either damage or enemies HP, I can't remember, but yeah. Yeah. And I actually mix, mix up the fights. Um, If he goes to Divine Thunder, it's going to be, like, these long extended fights. And if he goes to Trinity Force, he's going to be looking to pick off the back line. Um, so, again, my bad in the confusion. I was trying to come up with these things on the spot. Uh, but as we see right now... Swagga Stupid is just looking to take on this Scuttle, get Scuttle Dominance as he will be preparing for this dragon. Currently, his bot lane does have Cryo, so uh, might be looking for a sneaky little dragon play in the 7 minute mark um, as Hulk goes down for both sides. And Shalax Guy, once more, I guess, skirmishing around with business time 15, but that's not exactly what you want to do. Once again, Orn. As soon as he drops that brittle and he slaps you with it and also gains HP because of his um because of his grasp of the undying proc, that's just too much damage and too much healing for you to deal with. So it would be in your best interest to not exactly dual business time 15. And maybe wait for a gank or something uh to come in. Yeah, or just continue to use these like long range pokes. You do have a little bit of a range advantage uh with the Q and these silence um abilities that are just gonna like deal damage through minions um but if you are looking at just on a hand-to-hand -hand brawl business time 15 will come out on top as he does smash the hammer on you um and he's he hurts a lot more than people think that's abrina seeing kilgar fighting for some vision as now swagger stupid is in the spot side of red door getting engaged on swagger stupid coming into the back line and very nice combo Pushing Alarm all the way back. Ooh, Alarm does a nice play with her ultimate and Flash to get out of there alive. But Combo will be the one to secure the first blood onto Alistar as there's nothing that he could do in that situation. Now we got another engage coming on. Kilgar walking a little bit too deep as he just has, has to flash away to stay alive. Yeah, uses the blast plan and is now out of that fight. Is now out of that fight safely. Top side, we, had, we saw a little bit of engage. It seems like business time was actually the one losing the fight, forcing the Flash. We have now seen last minute goons heading over towards this dra uh, dragon pit um, to pick up the first dragon for them get them uh, already into the board as they have managed to pick up the first kill so first kill for dragon but it will be contested kilgar uh, yeah, managed to make them out and oh huge three man, three man oh, all on from kilgar as we got uh Spike super trying to do as much as he can uh, uh, Alistar is rooted down, getting taken down to less than 10% HP. Alarm going back into the dragon, maybe trying to secure this dragon from themselves. But once more, Karma is a scary champion. We got now Telus guys coming up from the back. TP coming in from business time too. Briticus trying to stay alive as now Orn is in the fight. And here we go. The ultimate is going to go down. First kill dropped for business time. Telus guy manages to get a kill before he gets slain. And now we have a four versus two oh no versus three players as two players are now down for goon squad this is washed up gaming coming out on top if they're actually washed up i want to see what they were in their prime because this was very well played by them a little bit sloppy towards the beginning as one of their members does fall down giving them um a little bit of a disadvantage but the tp coming from business time and britica is playing that very well um also managed to turn the fight around but out of everyone in that fight, Kilgar was the MVP. He's the one who managed to get that three-man ulti, uh, get them all vulnerable, get them all down low enough for the cleanup to happen. And as this happens, they will be able to uh, come out on top, making this a 3-4-1 for the side of Washed Up Gaming and managing to pick up the first Drake of the game. That was very nice played from from Watch Top Gaming and yeah, Dragon has gone down. I'm guessing you're going to be selecting Inferno Drake for your third Dragon pick of this game. Yes, yes, yes. This time Inferno Drake. Um, 
the, with the explosiveness of the Nico and the explosiveness of this Sibber, Infernal Drake is just gonna like make the most out of their damage. So, Infernal Drake, this one. What about you? What do you, what do you want to happen? We do have some tanky boys in play, Alistar Orn. So it'll be kind of cool to see if there's a Mountain Dragon for um, this third pick. Wait, can it even be Mountain Dragon? Oh, it cannot be Mountain Dragon. Oh, uh, I'm pushing there's it. There's options, yeah, unfortunately. It probably and cloud. Okay, but all happening from Killguard. Swag is stupid going in as now Talix guy uh, gets knocked up, and now we get Killgar. Yeah, Sabrina's gonna slay poison as. He just get caught out. Big Alistar, not so fast Alistar, and that will be his demise. As now we got we got a Brit Briticus coming in, trying to contest this Rift Hero business time in this top side. Also putting out a little bit of a pressure, and Kilgar trying to come back into this fight. And it seems like they would just want to disengage, as yeah, that was very very risky coming out for uh, last minute goons. Yeah, Sabina playing this very well, managing to kite out and using those um, Cassiopeia mechanics very well. Does manage to take down Poison with her Poison, ironically. And um, Briticus had some extra time to like try to get in there because his domain's still up. Uh, a, little, a little thing I would change is just get rid of that domain faster. Uh, Sabina kept on coming in and out of it, canceling the reset time for it. But if they had managed to get control of his domain, they might have actually been able to get this a top rift herald and um just helped hopefully used it somewhere around the map in order to get a little bit of a lead uh they are only 400 gold up so not much of a gold difference and both teams are still fairly even with three kills on both sides the only gold league that i would say is a little bit of a gap would be between the callus uh, the kaisa and the Sivir as that cs lead is a little bit big compare uh, when comparing adc farms yeah 22 cs lead uh, for the kaisa sitting at a comfortable comfortable position should be able to finish it, their item once they recall but we'll continue to stay in main. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to see Saber complete um, her first item, which not necessarily surprising as they did all for the tier first item. So she'll be able to finish this um, Mirror Mana fairly quickly. And Mana Mune, which will then turn into Mirror Mana once it is completely stacked up. Um, but as it stands right now, game's still in a pair, in a exactly even position. Um, there's only a slight advantage in Dragons for uh, watched up gaming and we're gonna see a gank coming to the top side might be the one to push oh that is not what you want to see coming from business tommy yeah it just misses his ultimate but we got Briticus dragon telex guy right back into the fight with his ultimate and now telex guy getting stunned down there's not really much he can do but he will get out of there a lot as the silence and the knockup will be enough Ooh, the moves the the oh unfortunately i thought i thought telex guy was gonna throw out some pretty crazy sidesteps but business time is just gonna bop him with that a uh, big hammer yeah, of his, and now we got Rift Herald. They managed to get out so much from Watch Up Gaming. Watch Up Gaming using two ultimates, using uh, one flash, and just expending so much to get this kill that would translate to this top turret, but it's gonna be hurtful for them as as next fight online without this horn with this um, flash. And we're gonna see Tell Tell Egg Guy still have his flash up. Uh, his CP is about to come up, and he does have his ultimate. So if they decide to look for something bot lane, until X guy should be at a, the slight advantage, uh, just simply because he managed to sell out so much time and get two ultimates out in that top lane fight. Now the lead will go to Watch Up Gaming. Just a slight gold lead, 1K gold lead, but it might be enough for them to snowball and maybe turn the game into their favor. As now Dragon is up and. Wards will be contested, Vision will be contested, Talax Guy is going to knock up Briticus, doing a little bit of initial damage, um, making sure to push him off as they want to secure this dragon for themselves. Now five players for last minute goons will be gathered around. Uh, business time does have his TP though, so he's just going to push down top as long as possible before TPing in, TP in end to, into this fight. And here we go, Dragon has been started, it's down to half HP, Saber throwing his ultimate down, Swagger Stupid already going in, three players, four players feared, all players feared as the late, very very late TP coming in from business time. 
might not be able to do much, but no, he does so much damage. We got, oh, Telex guys going in. Shutdown coming in for uh, Cassiopeia as Telex guys running down Alarm 777. But these guys going a little bit too deep. Nice flash heal from Regdor will save his top laner. And that will be the fight. Swagger Stupid goes down in exchange for Kilgar and Briticus. Now maybe Dragon will be uh, will also be g given to last minute goons. Though it seemed like a very good play, Kilgar held on to the ultimate for way too long and did not manage to use it properly. He had to use it to disengage instead of engaging, uh, expanding both his ultimate and his flash. And as Nico, you are going to be one of the biggest playmakers in your team, uh, especially when you're uh, the pure source of AP. And when you decide to use your ultimate to disengage, it just puts so much... It just it takes out so much weight off the enemy's shoulders, uh, knowing that you don't no longer have that ultimate and no longer have that threat. And coming back to this Nico, she decided to go for this uh, large chapter build, so it's not going to translate into uh, my favorite item, um, this Midnight Harvester. Midnight Harvester just does so much for Nico too. Uh, helps her with the burst, helps her uh, get into fights with that extra movement speed after damaging uh, enemies. But I'm interested to see what she is opting for instead. Um, Nico's not necessarily a mana hungry champion, so this last chapter, a little bit of useless in my opinion, but uh, still provides uh, potential for strong items. Uh, might look to go towards this Ludens Echo or this uh, Leandris Torment. Uh, she did manage to pick up another amplifying totem, which might turn into another component for um, Leandris Torment. Oh, yeah, Tell okay, guys, secures the Scuttle Crab. It's rubbing it into Kilgar's face that, hey, I'm the big boy, and that is my crab, and you gotta just deal with it. But Business Tom and Kilgar are on this top side, so he actually might go down for making it a little bit of too aggressive of a play. And yeah, there we go. His HP bar is gonna get burned apart by Business Tom as he finishes him off with a nice W. Now, Nico TPing back into the mid lane to grab that mini wave that is currently coming in. Briticus spot side, the jungler will be putting a little bit of pressure to force the enemies back. And unfortunately, the kill went on to Orn. Um, this is not exactly what you want to, what you want to see from Washed Up Gaming. Uh, Kilgar would have capitalized a lot more from this kill, as she is going to be one of those AP threats for the enemy team. Um, and Orn, a tank, yeah, he does tank. He does, he will be getting tankier and he should be able to start making a lot more aggressive plays. But no matter how aggressive the plays get, if there, if your team doesn't have the damage to follow up, um, plays are not always going to go your way. And Freddy Chris going in, you see him grabbing his chains onto UCO arrows. He will be the first one to fall to that fight. But tell us, guys, now here, TPing in. Alarm 777 seven, seven, getting engaged on forcing the flash away as now we got one more uh, Hecarim coming in here dr dr Driving in Briticus right back into his team and that is another kill a trade kill I believe for both sides uh, a trade from both sides but in the meanwhile the top thing we have business time minding his own business and taking his time destroying this top lane tower as it is going to be the first tier 2 to fall down if he does continue to push it uh, but they will be losing the bot tower a uh, game practically even 7 kills on both sides 1 tower for each per for each team and 1 drake for each team so uh, genuinely a mirror matchup happening at the moment um, although it is business time on the winning end of this top lane uh, fight with 20 CS up on top uh, tell X guy um, but should just be able to get away from this. The run is now up in four seconds. Inferno Drake is another Inferno Dragon is actually going to be up. So uh, yeah, I believe you were right in this bet. I was right. I was right. Let's go. Um, so Inferno should be pretty interesting. Uh, it's gonna be at the least a thirty-five minute soul. Um. If everyone, if a team just gets Drake on spawn, um, so we still have around 15 minutes of playtime before we do get to this all. And if this fight continues to go even, it might be even longer as teams might just take times, take take turns taking Dragon. Uh, but as it stands right now, game game seems fairly even. 
Uh, and now the favor will be tilted for Washed Up Gaming as as Sabrina st sticks into lane a little bit too far, and I guess it might be a miscommunication as four players just straight up uh, collapsed on her, and yeah, that will be the death of her as now Telex guy might get collapsed on too. Pretty close running in, and here we go. That stun is now down. Alarms doing that damage as he does for an 80 carry. And, but we got Swagger Stupid in this backside here. Poison has to do his best to zone him off in order to allow Alarm and Bridicus to get out of there safely. And now Drag is up. And here we go. The fight was on. Let's see. Drag has now been started. Bridicus is still alive. And Swagger Stupid is gaining that movement speed. Charging in on the Poison. Unfortunately, that's not the character that he wants to go on to. TP coming in from business time. A huge Orn ult. Uh, knocking up, connecting with the player, I believe, and now Inferno Dragon has fallen to Washed Up Gaming. Yeah, the, that ultimate was honestly very well played. He did not manage to um, hit anyone with it, but it was just perfectly used for stunning, keeping them all out of the, the fight, keeping moving them out of the jungle. Uh, and if they were to get hit by that ultimate, Kaiser could have very easily followed up with the ultimate. And uh, Kilgar did have the flash and the ulti to go onto the back line and get extra damage off. So very well played with that Orin ultimate. And as we look at the Nico, the Nico will be picking up this the item I was talking about earlier. Um What was it called? Okay. Um she will be picking up Leandri's Torment as she has completed uh, the Phoenix Codex and the Lodge Chapter. got a slight gold lead for Wash Up Gaming, about 1k gold lead, but they do have that Inferno Dragon. Both sides are actually still relatively even, as only one turret has fallen for both sides respectively. But yeah, even though the gold is fairly even, um, Orn has hit this critical point, the level 13. He's going to start upgrading his own item, and at each level after 13, he can upgrade one other person's item. Uh, these ornaments are going to start going down, which... Um, if there's an even gold, if the gold is even, it's going to be decided more towards washed up gaming simply because they are going to have these own items. And prior to the item rework, I think each item was like worth 1000 gold. So keeping that in mind, um, once you start getting these own items, it's going to be just an extra thousand gold into their pockets. Players gathered in this mid side they might be looking to take down this mid turret. And out of all the uh, out of all the three games we passed today, this has been the slowest one uh, for now. Uh, usually we saw P the team starting to round up around Baron Pit around this time, if not earlier. But as it seems right now, both teams are just looking to get prior across the lanes. No one really looking in the top jungle. Uh, they might be looking for a little cheese here in the bot river, but as it stands right now, it's literally just stalemate uh, pushing lanes in and waiting for them to be pushed back into them, pushing them back. Uh, as little skirmishes, little pokes coming down from both sides, but nothing really happening from either side. Anybody in chat got any thoughts on this game? Anything to talk about? But yeah, this game has just been pretty slow. I mean, both sides are playing this almost to perfection actually the team fights especially all the all the all the ganks all the pressure that they're putting on especially the dragon fights too they're playing this as it should be played yeah like uh, that's an interesting example the head but pulverize to disengage the choke ass from going onto you um very well played not necessarily the most exciting thing to do but it's like the smart thing you should do as we see it engage potentially turret dive a uh, chose though has turret aggro that's one two three four five Turret shot going into Togat, uh, and then a six turret shot going into Sivir. The red team has turrets has been destroyed. So like a stupid trying to do as trying to uh, duel with Kilgar, but once again Kilgar is the AP assassin that you're telling that you have been talking about, and he has finished that Leander's torment. So he will be doing tons of damage to Swagger stupid, especially when he only has plated steel cap boots. Yeah, I understand the Leander's torment built now. There's gonna be um again these fights are gonna last a little bit longer uh, that's what both teams want and against this cho'gath who does have like a lot of hp this hunting guy not this hunting guy this yandy's torment is gonna deal more damage than it's gonna burn him even more um so 
a smart build just to get that extra damage as the fights go on and as we see the trades going down it is going to be Kilgar coming out on the winning side versus a tall X guy. Now Dragon is going to be up in about 40 seconds. It is another Inferno Dragon, so the damage will be up to this game. Skarner has gone his area, his little zone down. So like a stupid still on the outskirts, just zooming around as Hecarim as Hecarim should be doing. Here we go, Silver has dropped his ultimate. Telex got coming from the top side. So like a stupid going into the back line, gearing of Kaisa. And now Boy is trying to do as much as he can. So like a stupid will be the first one to fall. We got a uh, huge Orn ultimate. Nico in this back side, obliterating uh, Goons, uh, obliterating last minute Goons' back line. And that is a team ace coming out from Washed Up Gaming as that team fight was just pre played to perfection. Oh uh, no, actually, it's not an ace. Uh, Zabrina is still alive and the last player remaining. Unfortunately, he did not come into that fight in time. And will be the last man standing. Inferno Dragon will fall for Washed Up Gaming. And without Sabina there, they could not really do much. She was also like one of their main damage sources. Currently sitting at 2 1 1, uh, 2 1 2, with two completed items. So she she would have provided a lot more for this team fight. And now they're turning towards this. This Baron Pit. Uh, and with Sabina being the only member up at the time, it's going to be hard for her to contest this. this a Baron that is just being shredded by the Nico, by the Kai'Sa, by the Orn, and it will be secured. This game went from being dead even to now being 6.3k gold for the side of Washed Up Gaming with three dragons, uh, putting them at a soul at soul point. Um, dragon Soul should be coming down around 32 minutes if they do decide to go for that, and after that, it's going to be so much harder for last minute goons to really do much and they're gonna have to come up with something last minute to try to salvage the game uh try to push for these towers and try to get ahead and prevent that damage from even hurting more than it already is and yeah with that baron buff alarms and both his support will now be able to put a lot more pressure into this mid lane as these baron empowered minions can just easily shove down any wave that they want and that's what they'll be doing they'll be pushing the side lanes too forcing pressure onto both sides and yeah that stands right now the 6000 gold lead is just stabilizing they are just pushing um waves right now they're looking at here on Tolex Guy. Yeah, Tolex Guy is going to get caught out, but that is one tanky boy. He's going to be returning some damage onto Alistar. Uh, Britica is trying to do as much as he can as a front line. We got Orn coming from the top side, connects his ultimate with two players. Tolex Guy somewhat still alive, flashing just to stay alive, but Alarm will be a sniper and taking him down with that shot of his to to cure a kill. Now that is a 5v4, this is going to be kind of dangerous for last minute goons. Riddick is flashing and using the ultimate spleen and swag is stupid and Kilgar will be the one that gets that kill. That door getting knocked up. That is not what you want to happen. Sabrina having to flash out of there in order to stay alive and now Karma is going to be the last remaining player as he as they both get taken down for an ace and I'm pretty sure that will be the game as the turret and inhibitor and probably Nexus will follow along the fall. Yeah, Watched Up Gaming having a bouncy house with Orn and Alistar just knocking everyone else up, uh, con helping conclude this game, and honestly, very well played by both of them. This has been one of the best showings from team coordination, uh, not necessarily looking to take on as many fights as the previous games, but definitely taking on to the smart fights, the right fights, and just winning out correctly. Very slow and steady, uh, very well played, kind of like in an LCS format where they don't aren't necessarily fighting, they're looking for skirmishes. They are expending ultimates and expending things to help certain laners get ahead, and then in return, using those leads to win in the fight together. Not necessarily skirmishes on the side as we have seen in previous games, and the final scoreline is 17 to 7 with a 10k gold lead for the side of Washed Up Gaming. And yeah, that, I mean, it was just that one team fight that pretty much threw the game. It was the one where Zabrina was not in it. It was that drag fight, and that drag led to Baron, and that Baron led to a final team fight uh, with a very nice play from 
uh, I believe Birdie Kiss flashing over the wall to Dragon Swagger Stupid, securing that kill on the jungler, and from there, everything just fell apart from last minute goons. So, that will be the final game of the day, and I thank all you viewers for coming in to watch, for spending your time to hear his cast. And uh, do you have any final thoughts, Ken? No, no, just uh, really excited to see how this um, washed, up ga washed up gaming squad does in the future. Uh, clearly showing some potential, playing a bit slower than other teams, but definitely playing smart. Um, and as long as you're getting the wins, it doesn't matter how fast you play, as long as you are securing the dragon, securing the objectives, and ultimately securing the wins like they have done. Uh, thank you for joining us. That would be it for the stream, and we'll see you guys next time.